Hi everyone, welcome to Live Darts. We've got friend of the show with us, as always. We've got Wayne Marder with us. Wayne, thanks for joining us. It's been a while, to be fair, since we spoke to you. Uh, it, it's not been long enough, in my opinion. <laughs> I say, at, at one point, at one point, it was every week. It was. I, look, I, I love seeing you, Phil. I love seeing your squidgy little fuck. Oh, he's got such a lovely face. All roads lead to Alexandra Palace, the world's on the horizon, the festive season. I know we all love this time of year. You were responsible for breaking a lot of hearts live on Sky Sports News a few days ago. Who are your five to watch for this year's World Championships? Uh, the, the way the seedings are, it, it, was, it was kind of nothing to do with me. I know the draw was made by, by myself and Barry Hearn, but uh, the seedings are what's caused the problem. And it's Michael Van Gerwen, uh, Gary Anderson in, in the top half. And I only mentioned those two for one reason, is that if they're apart, everyone thinks that they meet in the final. Well, they, they can't meet in the final, so pick someone from the bottom half if you're going to have a bet. Talking about the bottom half, is it a concern that the two big seeds in Peter Wright and Rob Cross are, without being unkind, bang out of form right now? Uh, bang out of form, I think, is a bit unfair. I think they're damn right poor. That's going to go down like an absolute bomb. I, I think they're probably playing between them. This is going to sound so ridiculous for Rob Cross. He's playing the worst darts of his professional career, which is like two years old. So it's a bit of a joke, but it's also fair. He's not playing well. He's not playing well at all. And Peter Wright, I've been saying since 2014, if you keep changing, it will catch up with you. He's catching up with him. He's not playing well. He doesn't know now if it's his action, or if it's his darts, or if it's confidence, or whatever it is. All he knows is that he's not playing well. So the fact that all the changing of the darts, it, it just put, it's putting him everywhere. He doesn't know what to think. Uh, You've got, to, you've got to fancy someone from the bottom half that is not fancied. Uh, when I say not, not Rob Cross, not Peter Wright, do you know what? Could it be made for Michael Smith? I think I really like the bully boy. I like his price, but 18 to 1 at the moment with title sponsors William Hill. I still think that's a great shout from the bottom half, personally. Yeah, I don't think 18 to 1 is, is a poor price, and, and there was bigger prices out there. Mencia Sulevich, Gerwin Price, Going Price has shown, and this is what he has shown, he's taken a lot of stick, a lot of stick, Going Price. He has shown that you don't have to be the best player in an event to win it. What he's shown is you need the, 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 the nous, the game, the, the, the bottle, the, the, the composure under pressure at the right time. Putting your opponent off, which let's be fair, against Gary Anderson, he did in the Grand Slam. But what I'm getting at here is, Gerwin Price may not be, he may not be the best player in the world, but would it be a surprise if he come through that bottom half? I don't think it would. Michael Smith, Mentor Sulevich, for me, along with Gerwin Price, in that bottom half, I wouldn't like to bet against any of those three because uh, I think they can get there at big prices. But I'll tell you what, to say that Michael or Gary won't win it, it's still a bold, bold call. Best two players on Planet Darts, but by a long way as well, I think, right? Yes. Now. And for a lot of people, if they make it to the semis, that's the people's final, almost. I said it on Twitter for the semi-final with the players. Yeah. The arena went flat, and I'm not being disrespectful to Daryl Gani, but everyone wanted to see Gary Anderson against Michael Van Gerwen because they are so good. Yeah. Touch on the odds from the bottom half, going price, as we speak, this might change by the time it gets edited, but 40 to one for a major title win, surely that's too big a price. It's already changed because I'm on, I'm on large. Uh, no, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I, I, I like going price. I like the way he does things. Uh, I'm not a believer in, in Gary Anderson saying, I just want to play darts, so therefore let's get on with it. Look, players, in decades gone have shown weakness by only playing at a certain pace. And if someone comes along and puts them off, then, well, that's the way it is. Gary Anderson, we know, is miles better than Gerwin Price. He's miles better than anyone in the world, apart from Michael Van Gerwen. Unfortunately, they may meet in the semi-final. I say may because it's not a given. It's not a given. Whoever wins that final, we think they're gonna go on and win it. Well, the Players' Championship says that it may not be that way. And I thought you were on a real good point about it went flat. 
after, after Michael Van Gerwen and the Gary Anderson game. They thought Michael Van Gerwen was going to win the Players' Championship. I did. I'm not even going to say that Daryl Gurney did, but maybe he did. Maybe he did. What I'm getting at is, if those two meet in the semi-final, and one of them is in the final, doesn't mean they're going to win. It doesn't mean they're going to win at all. It means it's going to be another great competitive game and a final that we're going to relish. But we've got to say that those two are the two to beat, but one of them has to beat each other. That's what makes it so special from the bottom half. The bottom half is the place to be. Michael Van Gerwen, Gary Anderson, Adrian Lewis, Daryl Gurney, Raymond Van Barneveld. Uh, uh, do you know what? There's another, there's another what, uh, 11 in, in that half? No, actually, th th there's, there's more than that. There's so many players in it, I can't even remember. 96 is there. Yeah. One to eight in a couple of years. It, it, it's, becoming, it's becoming so, so tough to win. It's get, whoever wins it. Whoever wins it is going to be... Uh, First off, obviously pleased with themselves, but they're going to have to come through the toughest, hardest uh, draw that the world's ever seen because there's 96 players. It's not like there's 24 like back in the day or 32, 64. It's tough now and uh, it's, it's, you don't have to be great. You have to be better than great, you have to be strong, you have to, you have, to have stamina as well. Uh, mentally, mentally, you've got to be up there with, with the very, very best that's ever played the game. Good luck to you all, because I'll tell you what, not for me, not for me. Can I put you on the spot right now? I know we're not in quite December quite yet. Who wins it? Michael Van Gerwen beats Gerwen Price in the final. Obviously, with the world, I can't not ask you the question. The Holy Grail of the Premier League 10, it's talked about a lot on social media, as you well know. Do you think there is only one or two places left to play for. And I say that because surprise packages have won televised tournaments and ranking events to almost book their spot and steal them off yeah. someone that hasn't. Yeah. Do you think we're firing for two places maybe? Uh, do you know what I'd love to see? I would love to see, just, for the, the, just to cause carnage, everyone thinks the Premier League's kind of settled barring what you said, one or two. Imagine two outsiders being in the final. Imagine. Uh, well, it stopped you on the Rams last year. Dimit it's not. Dimitri was in the quarterfinal. Jamie Lewis. Jamie Lewis. So it's not beyond the Rams that it could happen. Right. I'm going to pick out, out the two. Right. We're saying out the two. Kim Hybrex and Devon Peterson. Are they in separate halves? Don't know without looking, but we'll, we'll, we'll play as if it is. Anyway, who cares? Who cares? Just say they are, right? Just say they are. They get into the final. Right, they're, they're in one of the best finals the world's ever seen. I'm, 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 stay with me. Do you leave them out of the Premier League? No. No? So, so, who are we knocking out now? Are we knocking out Raymond Van Barneveld, Simon Whitlock? In Barney's last ever season? For me, I'm going to be quite controversial here. You have to go with people that have won this year, if that's the case, or got to a major final. If you were to leave, for me, if you left out a world finalist for someone that hasn't won something, regardless of the fairy tale, yeah. for me, that sends out the wrong message to everyone. I couldn't care less about messages. It's about putting bums on seats. It's about selling out arenas. Who would you rather watch? Jamie Lewis or Raymond Van Barneveld? I'm just saying. No, it, it's a topical I'm, conversation. It's not topical, it's absolute fact, what I'm saying. I, I, I speak the truth, I don't lie. I don't lie. Look, all these people, all these people that are giving it, you can't have Barney in the Premier League. What's he done? What's he done? Uh, apart from five world titles, he's done absolutely nothing. Apart from a Grand Slam and a Premier League, he's done absolutely nothing. Apart from someone that may have changed the landscape of darts in Europe, Raymond Van Barneveld has done absolutely nothing apart from that. Leave him out in his last year and the PDC, Sky Sports are missing out on a major opportunity. Knowing, knowing that these people that have come to see him may be thinking, we may never ever see Raymond Van Barneveld again. They've got to put him in. If you put in the likes of 
Joe Cullen, if you put in the likes of uh, Ian White, if you put in the likes of, I keep saying the likes of, I should just say their name, uh, if you put in these people, they can't fill arenas like Raymond Van Barneveld. They can't. I'm not having it. Anyway, carry on. So I'm guessing he's in your tent then, Wayne. <laughs> Look, I, I'm, I'm one of those. I'm, I'm from back in the day. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not of today. I, I, I like the way that, that you're thinking. I like the way that everyone else thinks. I, I just don't. I just don't agree. I, I don't agree that that uh, there's players that that sell that sell seats like him. I, I don't think there are ten players in the world better than him. I just don't think there are ten players in the world that that command the respect he commands. I don't think there are also. 10 players in the world that can get up there week in, week out and prove that they are absolutely world class. That's the main thing. I think Raymond Van Barneveld, if we're going on rankings now, is he really the 17th best player in the world? Not a chance. No, he's not. No, I'm with you on that one. Wayne, absolute pleasure. I'll tell you, I'll let you go on something you've got to go and play in a minute. Thanks for joining us at Live Darts, as always. And I'll see you for the marathon slog at Alexandra Palace starting in two weeks, buddy. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're a gent. Yes, mate, absolute pleasure. Yeah, absolute gent.